with Restless Gardener. Today we are going to talk about tall, narrow shrubs or small or tight spaces that provide privacy. So we are in my side yard right now, which I haven't filmed this part of the garden in a while because it's unfinished. We started to tear it apart this spring and just haven't gotten back to it so it's a little messy and quite honestly I'm a little embarrassed to show it but this is where we have three different types of tall narrow trees two are evergreen and two are deciduous so I'm going to show you those because this is a tight space uh, I don't know exactly what the width is here but it's probably I'm going to say 20 20 feet wide maybe 22 feet wide from the side of the house to where we put the fence now our property does go out about um, at the beginning of the fence it's probably about a foot foot and a half to the end of the fence we go out probably another two feet but I didn't want to put the fence right on the property line because our property does get wider as it goes up I wanted the fence to be straight and I didn't want it to be on the property line. So um, it is it is a little narrow. Even if I had put the fence out another foot and a half, it would still be quite narrow. So we needed to come up with some trees that were gonna provide us a screen here and stay narrow. So we're gonna start first with the Forever Goldie. These are a Thuria Placata. This is a Western type Arborvitae. We planted these in probably, gosh, my memory is horrible. I want to say 2021. And I will show you a picture of what they looked like earlier this year compared to what they look like now. These are considered a fast grower. For us so far, I'd say they've been moderate. But, Earlier this spring, the tips, at least of these two, this one doesn't get nearly as much sun, so it's not growing as fast, thanks in part to this um, huge laurel, which I won't talk about because they are so disease prone, but if you like that as a screen, you certainly could use cherry laurels. These have grown immensely fast. So, um, yeah, they were probably four to five feet when we moved them over here, and I would say they are about uh, nine, ten feet at the moment. So if, if you like that, that look, um, that is an option for you. However, let's focus on <laughs> the, um, evergreens and trees that we're going to be talking about in this video. So these have grown just since spring from the tips of the fence posts, which is where they were. You see the tip tip of that fence post right there that's where they were in the spring so they've put on a foot of growth at least I would say 12 to 15 inches of growth and they have gotten wider so this is their mm, second full growing season because 2021 would not have been a full growing season although it would have been close to full so I would say this is the first year where they really, really, really started to put on growth. These will get to be about, the stats have been changing on these. I think this is a newer introduction. So as the growers figure out more about the plant, I think they change kind of the stats. So I think this is gonna be at least 10 feet. I think originally there were a 12 to 15 footer, which I can see them getting. Evergreens never stop growing and three to four feet wide. I have a feeling we'll probably get a little wider, which is why in a previous video I showed you we moved the two lime rookie hydrangeas that were in front of them. I will plant something else in front of those at a later date, but that's not important right now. What is important is these are a really quick growing evergreen that stays narrow and that will get tall enough to provide a screen. They are a pretty gold color, which is kind of unique in the evergreen field and that's why I wanted them I didn't want just something that was green so I needed something narrow tall but not too tall 
uh, quick growing and something that was just not green because I didn't want another green shrub next to the green of the cherry laurel. So that is the Forever Goldie Western Red Cedar. The next deciduous item we have here, which has not performed well for me, it may perform well in a different climate, different zone, although they are supposed to be hardy and perform well in my zone, they just don't. It is a service berry called Standing Ovation. It has put on growth. I would say it's probably, again, it's probably about a foot higher than it was when we planted this in, I think this is a 2022 edition. I know it's tough to see because of my little garden art here, so let me move that. Um, and it's flowering again, which is probably because it defoliates every year and then starts to push new growth, which is not, you know, that's not what it's supposed to do. So um, you can see the pretty flowers, you can see green leaves, and again, this is a hybrid service berry. Um, I will put on the screen what type of service berry this is, and again, this was chosen because it gets tall and narrow, 12 to 15 feet tall, 5 to 6 feet wide. For us, we just have issues with Japanese beetles, which I think is the cause of most of the defoliation, even though we treat it, but I also think it just doesn't get enough water. Believe it or not, since we planted this a couple of years ago, our summers have been really dry, so, and we do not have any irrigation set up in this bed. I'd like to, but at the moment we don't. But anyway, if um, you have maybe a slightly cooler climate, less Japanese beetles, I think this would do well in a narrow location. And it is, like I said, it is covered in new buds. You can see all the buds, uh, and it is even flowering just turned out to be not a good plant for us but again it might be a good plant in your location if you need a tall narrow deciduous tree as a screening plant so the next ones here we just planted this year and again I will insert a picture to show you um, the phenomenal amount of growth that these have put on in just six months we planted them in April these are the American Pillar Arborvitae they are probably about, it's tough to tell, this bed is slightly raised, but let me stand up next to it. They're probably five and a half to six feet tall when we planted them. They were probably about four feet tall, and they've also filled in a little bit. This is, again, this is a newer, newer variety of arborvitae that is, again, bred to be narrow, not so much short. Uh, I would have liked something that's going to stay a little bit shorter here, but there was nothing on the market that was going to stay narrow in the 12 to 15 foot range, at least not that I was able to find. These will get about 35 feet tall, which I think will look a little crazy here, but we'll see. So this is another great plant for a tall, narrow, evergreen screen that is quick growing. Like I said, they've already put on a foot and a half at least of growth this year. We have four of them here. And I think you, um, you can tell kind of why we need the screen here. I mean, this is our side yard. Our patio is right there. And everybody wants privacy when they sit out in their backyard. I think that's universal. Um, so, you know, for no other reason than that, we, we want a little bit of privacy for our patio. And then the next one is a new addition this year. I got this one at work. This is called a Tokyo Tower Fringe Tree. And... It's another tall, narrow, deciduous tree, which will get pretty white flowers in the spring. It is, again, about six feet tall already, and it will get about five to six feet wide, so we've left plenty of room on either side and in front for it to get that wide. And again, I can plant some pretty stuff in front of it in the spring. 
so that is another option and it's pretty popular it's not I don't believe it's a very difficult to find shrub uh, tree so I think it should be readily available at least online so I think you know once all this stuff starts to really grow in we will have a nice part evergreen part deciduous screen here in a narrow tight space I didn't want full evergreen. I kind of like the look of a mixed border, so that's why I went with part evergreen and part deciduous. And again, they are growing in and filling out at least the evergreens quite nicely. So let's take a walk over to the other side where we also needed a little bit of a screen and I will show you what I have planted there. So I just came outside the fence real quick so that you can see a shot of the privacy plantings. So we've got the Tokyo Tower fringe tree, we've got the four American Pillar Arborvitaes, we've got the three Forever Goldie Arborvitaes, and then of course you can see the laurels there. So I think once they all grow in, and of course what you can't see, the poor little service berry, which is right there. Um, once they grow in, they will be a really nice screen, even for our upstairs bedroom. The Arborvitaes will anyway. Um, now that's a spare bedroom. We don't use that, so we don't need to worry about privacy, but just in case you have a similar situation. I always seem to forget this shrub, and I'm not sure why. Maybe because I'm not really using it as a privacy screen. So let's talk about this one a little bit. I have two of them, and again, they are quick growing. This is only the second season that this is in the ground and it's probably already put on two feet of top growth and it has definitely gotten wider. This is called the Blue Arrow Juniper. Um, I believe this is a native, this is a type of eastern red cedar. I will confirm that and I will put on the screen. Um, you could use this definitely in a narrow side yard because it stays about two feet wide. It's not bothered by any pests, at least not for me yet. It's really pretty. It is very, very blue. And I chose it here because I needed something in this. This again, this is a narrow bed between the edge of my patio, which I know you can't see because of supertunia bubblegum supertunia vista bubblegum but there is just a small bed here next to the steps between the patio it's quite dry because it's under the eaves of my house this juniper likes it dry it gets full sun here it will get about 12 feet tall which will top up it will touch the um, cantilever there of my house but that's okay I'm fine with that um, it will get a little bit fuller. No, I think it's fully grown at the bottom. That's about, I'm going to say that's probably 18 inches wide, 18, maybe 24. So I think once it starts to grow taller, the middle here will be a little bit wider too, which in actuality does provide me with some privacy when I come out my patio door here, since we have steps from the patio up to the door. I kind of feel like, and I'll show you, when I come out, I'm kind of totally exposed, which to me I don't like. Again, I think it's universal. We all want privacy in our yards. And when I come out my patio in the morning to have my coffee, I don't necessarily want to be on full view. So that blue arrow juniper there is going to fit the bill to provide me with that little bit of screening. And I have another one here not for any screening whatsoever, just to continue some of the um, the blue evergreen interest on the other side of the fireplace here. So that is definitely another quick growing narrow evergreen you can use for screening if you have a tight spot. 
So this is on my other side of the yard, which you have seen in plenty of videos. Um, again, this is a narrow side yard, although it is a little bit wider here. Um, but again, I think you can see why we wanted a little bit of a screen here. Our, our yards in this part of, or on, our, on this part of our street are long and narrow. I wish that weren't the case, but it is. Um, even though our property actually does go right up to the fireplace of our neighbor. <laughs> Long story. Not my fault, not my decision. That's just how the township worked this lot. But anyway, so we have a very narrow area on the other side of this hedge, which I will tell you what it is in a moment. And it's our only access to the top of our property because we cannot access the top of our property from the other side yard where we just came from. So you can see between my neighbor's Alberta spruce hedge and where we had our dry creek bed. It was already narrow, but I wanted a privacy screen here at least for the summer months. So I needed something that was going to stay tall and thin. And what fit the bill right here was the purple pillar Rose of Sharon. Now, obviously, I pulled a Rose of Sharon out of the other side. I don't know if I mentioned that. In order to create the evergreen privacy hedge I just showed you. But that Rose of Sharon was vase-shaped. And it really, it got two fence lengths wide. And it was way too big for that bed. It shaded everything else underneath it and it was highly invasive. We are still pulling Little Rose of Sharon's out of that side bed, even though we pulled it out in the spring. These are sterile, although I have to say, I do see some Rose of Sharon's popping up over here, but nothing like we had with a purple chiffon or blue chiffon Rose of Sharon on the other side. And these are narrow and they stay upright. They need full sun. Now I will say this one on the end here maybe doesn't get quite as much sun as it would like. I think it still gets six hours of sun. But these ones here probably get 10 to 12 hours of sun and you can see how much fuller they are. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, Rosa Sharon's want full on sun, full stop. Um, they have grown so quickly that, um, again, I don't know if this is the second or third year. I'll have to go back and see if I can find um, details of when I planted this. There are six here, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, and they are already, I would say, at their full height and width. Um, I Like I said, that one on the end, I wish that would fill in a little bit. And maybe over the years it will. Maybe just not as quickly as these others have. They get really, really pretty flowers. They're still blooming in October. And they are visited by pollinators. Although, um, you know, Rosa Sharon is not my first pick for a pollinator attractor. Uh, especially because it's not native. But you can see all the flowers up there. I do see bees. But that's not why I picked these plants. I picked them because I needed the privacy screen and I needed to stay narrow. So these fit the bill really, really well. Again, I think this is a newer addition and I think they do come in white. Um, I think it's called the White Pillar Rose of Sharon if you prefer a white flower. I kind of prefer color. So they really fit the bill nicely here. Now there are other, I could have chose to put the American Pillar over here too. Um, and I may do something further down. There is an opening between the end of this bed where the purple pillars are and where that bed is with the flamethrower red bud. Um, but that will be... Uh, a different video because that will be part of my plans for 2024 video so stay tuned for that so that is what I wanted to show you today just in case any of you need narrow evergreens if you have a narrow side yard 
or even a narrow any part of your yard and you need some screening give some thought to the plants that I showcased on this video today they are quick growing and they really do provide a quick privacy screen if you have any questions let me know Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.